Welcome to the Tom Hartman University Book Club. Uh, today we're reading from ADHD and the Edison Gene, a drug-free approach to managing the unique qualities of your child. Um, a relatively new book by me. Uh, this is from the introduction. I was in India in 1993 to help manage a community for orphans and blind children on behalf of a German charity. During the monsoon season, the week of the big Hyderabad earthquake, I took an all-day train ride almost all the way across the subcontinent from Bombay through Hyderabad to Raja Mundre to visit an obscure town near the Bay of Bengal. In the train compartment with me were several Indian businessmen and a physician, and we had plenty of time to talk as the country flew by from sunrise to sunset. Curious about how they viewed our children diagnosed as having attention, hyper, attention deficit hyperactivity hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, I asked, are you familiar with those types of people who seem to crave stimulation yet have a hard time staying with any one focus for a period of time? They may hop from career to career and sometimes even from relationship to relationship, never seeming to settle into one job or into a life with one person, but the whole time they remain creative, incredibly creative and inventive. Ah, we know this type well, one of the men said, the other three nodding in agreement. Well, what do you call this personality type, I, call, I asked them. Very holy, he said. These are old souls near the end of their karmic cycle. Again, the other three nodded agreement, perhaps a big more, bit more vigorously in response to my startled look. Old souls, I questioned, thinking that a very odd description for some those who uh, American psychiatrists have diagnosed as having a particular disorder. Oh, yes, the physician said. In our religion, we believe that the purpose of reincarnation is to eventually free oneself from worldly entanglement and desire. In each lifetime, we experience certain lessons, and finally we are free of this earth and can merge into the oneness of God. When a soul is very close to the end of those thousands of incarnations, he must take a few lifetimes to do many, many things, to clean up all the little threads left over from his previous lifetimes. Another businessman added, this is a man very close to being enlightened. We have great respect for such individuals, although their lives may be difficult. Another businessman raised a finger and interjected, but it is through the difficulties of such lives the souls are purified. The others nodded agreement. I said, in America, they consider this behavior indicative of a psychiatric disorder. All three looked startled and then laughed. In America, you consider our most holy men, our yogis and swamis, to be crazy people as well, said the physician, with a touch of sadness in his voice. So it is with different cultures. We live in different worlds. We in the Western world have such holy and nearly enlightened people among us, and we say they must be mad. But as we're about to see, they may be interested, uh, they may instead be our most creative individual, our most extraordinary thinkers, our most brilliant inventors and pioneers. The children among us, whom our teachers and psychiatrists say are disordered, it may, they may in fact carry a, a set of abilities, a skill set, that was necessary for the survival of humankind in the past, that has created much of what we presently treasure as our quality of life, and that will be critical to the survival of the human race in the future. There is immense power in how we choose to view what's happening around us, and this is terrifically important when we consider how we can best know our children and provide them with the upbringing they need, an upbringing that will lead them to be healthy, happy, functioning adults. The premise of this book is that children who have uh, what we have come to know as ADHD are important and vital gifts to our society and culture, and in the largest sense can be an extraordinary gift to the world. In addition, for those adults who have been similarly diagnosed or defined, this book offers a new way of understanding themselves and their relationship to the world, a way that brings insight, insight, empowerment, and success. The long history of the human race, as we'll see in this book, has been conferred on us some more than others, has conferred on us some more than others, a set of predilections, temperaments, and abilities carried through the medium of our genetic makeup. These skills are ideally suited to life in the ever-changing world of our ancient ancestors, and we have now discovered are also ideally suited to the quickly changing modern world of cyberspace and widespread ecological and political crises that require rapid response. I will call this genetic gift the Edison gene, after Thomas Edison, who brought us electric lights and phonographs and movies and literally 10,000 other inventions. 
He is the model for the sort of impact a well-nurtured child carrying this gene can have on the world. While I'm principally referring to the DRD4 gene, see Chapter 5, the science of genetics is embryonic with new discoveries being made every day. No, no doubt, sometime soon, we'll have a better, more complete list of the specific genes that make up what Dave DeBronckart first called the Edison trait back in 1992, and Lucy Jo Palladino expanded on considerably in 1997 in her wonderful book, The Edison Trait. For the moment, though, I'll just use the useful shorthand of the Edison gene. When Thomas Edison's school teacher threw him out of school in the third grade for being fidgety, slow, and inattentive, his mother, Nancy Edison, the well-educated daughter of a Presbyterian minister, was deeply offended by the schoolmaster's characterization of her son. As a result, she pulled him out of school, and she became his teacher from then until the day he went off to work on his own for the railroads. And thus continues the story of people with ADHD and great success and how you can help your child be like that.